Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the SimCity 4 Masterclass. My name is SmileyMK93 and in this video we're going to continue our work on harbours by looking specifically at freight seaports. Freight seaports, as the name suggests, are used to load freight onto ships for transporting across oceans between countries. So let's learn how to build one. First thing to consider is the location. As you can see here, you want a fairly flat, straight-ish coastline on which to build a port. So if it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, you just need something to build on. But yeah, something like this would work fairly well. So having established a location, we needed to build the port. The first thing is the cranes. For this I'm using, I believe these are the CDK cranes. There'll be a link in the description, certainly. Now, what you want to do with these cranes is you want to spread them out across your seaport. You need quite a big space at least and you want to put the cranes in clusters like you see here I've got a cluster of three there I'm going to build another cluster of a couple of cranes further down so yeah just group them and spread them out across your port that will give you the most realistic appearance you'll notice that these lots automatically flatten the terrain so there's no need to prepare the terrain in fact I would recommend you not preparing the terrain behind with these otherwise it will go wrong having built your cranes you now need to put the rest of the dock so we start with this these end pieces there's a right end piece that I've just built and then there's the left end piece give yourself a good amount of space this will be quite a small port for demonstration purposes but of course in real life these ports can be absolutely enormous Next up, I like to put a, a ship or two, just to give the port some life. Try and align the ship underneath your cranes, there's obviously no point in putting the ship in between the cranes, because, you know, the ship's got to be loaded. Just ignore that second crane, I'll get rid of that. That second ship, sorry, I'll get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. And then it's just a case of filling in your dock. So there's one of the lots you can use is this container port dock with stack a lot, which contains a vehicle, what's called a stacker vehicle, which is designed for moving containers. You can see that it's a bit hard to see, but you can see it there in the background between the cranes, isn't it? Between the cranes and just dotting it around your port would be good. Then you can use the filler pieces to fill it in. So I'll leave you to figure that out for yourself. Now it's time to extend the port and add some more features. Now to do this we need to flatten the land. The best way to do this is just to get one of our dock lots and because that because it automatically allows the terrain to quite tight. There you go. And then you can use the um, usual rail flattening method to flatten the rest of the terrain. You want to flatten as wide as the port to about 10 tiles width. You can always make it wind if you need to, use the terrain crew to make sure it's the correct height. It should be 250.5 meters. Anyways, eventually you'll get something like this. Obviously delete it and now it's time to consider some road unloading. To do this we're going to use these container lots. I'll put a link to these in the description if I can find them. So this, these are for unloading lorries. Con unloading containers from lorries. So there's a couple of these lots, and the way these lots work, you'll notice, I'm mousing over it now, there's this little gap in between the containers and the crane, so what, how it works in real life is the lorries would drive between the container and the crane, and the crane would pick up the containers and put them in a stack as you see there for on transport, and then the stackers would take it to the cranes. So you, there are a few of these lots and you can expand them and you can build something like that I'll leave you to experiment so next thing to do is the rail terminal finding out land and creating some space for a stub and then because I had to dig out a bit of terrain I'm just gonna build an embankment to take it back up to, to the proper level this level's being a bit weird So you'll notice that I've put the rail terminal a bit further away from the docks, which is representative of real life. You don't tend to see railways going right up to the cranes, at least not in the ports that I've seen when I was researching this video. 
the cr containers will be taken from the rail terminal to the crane to the ships by these stack of vehicles. So now we've created a stop and access line that way, we just need to place the rail terminal piece, which I believe is part of the CD case set that I've been using. I actually need to extend expand a little bit more. get the orientation right and there you go. Now one of the issues with this lot is it doesn't have a runaround loop for the um, for trains so if a train came in loco first to this lot it would get stuck. We obviously don't want that so we need to build a little runaround loop to help us with to facilitate that move. So you'll notice I've built an STR transition piece available from the NAM. What we're going to do is we're going to place two of those back to back. So let's create a single track brief single track section when it eventually loads to build one of those and then we're going to extend out this double track section which will be uh, which will include a run around loop and you want to make this fairly long obviously because your freight trains are fairly long still by eye I've said it's about 25 tiles which is about 400 meters which is 400 meters Probably long enough for freight train, maybe slightly longer. Obviously, it depends on how long the freight trains are in your country. And then we can go back to single track. Rail connections to your main line for a port will often be single track, so you want to reflect that. And then we're just going to connect to our main line using the using an AM dragon pattern, as you see here. Of course, you can build in extra sidings if you want to. Just doing a quick and dirty job here. So that's our rail terminal completed. Now it's time to look at the fences. These are just straight out of the um, out of the seaport set, and just place those around your port. And that just gives your port security. And then I'm going to use one of these port road lots. I mean, they're not complete. Obviously, you can go a bit mad with these. But generally, you want to keep the roads fairly straight. Remember, lorries are going down them, so you don't want too many sharp turns. But yeah, just the main road through the port will be fine at this stage. And then fill in the rest, and fill in the blank spaces with this empty ground lot. Now it's time to look at the um, at the entrance to the port, and we're going to build some. We need to build some um, facilities for customs and border checks. As this is an international port, I've used these two hangar lots. I used to think they're hangar lots, which are pretty perfect. It's exactly the right style for this for customs building. Delete one of the port port roads for road access, and you'll see why in a minute. So to give access we're going to build two one-way roads and you'll know this will be the exit that I'm building now and you'll notice I'm laying it out in this zigzaggy pattern zigzaggy pattern uh, and that's basically to provide capacity for the for lorries to queue up we're going to build some checkpoints in a minute so that will obviously create queues and so we need the road capacity so road capacity to allow the lorries to queue So we built the entrance, sorry, we built the exit road just now, and now we're doing the entrance road. Of course, this is one-way road, so make sure you get the orientation correct. I'm just uh, tweaking it until I'm happy with it. Just, and once you're happy with the layout, you just connect the one-way roads up. Now, this isn't this doesn't provide enough capacity really, so we're going to build in a bit more capacity by building in an extra lane. Lane for the checkpoints, and to do that, we're going to upgrade to OWR3 using the transitions as you see here. And we just do the same at the other end. 
you'll notice we've also extended the OWR3 at the end of our entrance road. There, and that's where our checkpoint's going to go. So I'm just connect. Right now, I'm just connecting up the um, the access road. That's fairly straightforward. So now it's time to build. So now I'm going to use this, these um, RHW disconnectors to connect back to the port road. And then I can place port road pieces. Pieces. You can use a T and then I'm going to use a T for the one road on the left and a straight piece for the OWR3 on the right. Just because the T piece won't work properly with a 3 iron road. So I think it looks visually better. And you'll notice... We placed the piece and we now have a visual connection between the one way road and the port road. So now it's time to build the checkpoints. For these I'm going to use this OWR free toll booth, which I think works quite well. Place it on the OWR free, right next to the hang, right next to the um to the hangar lots which we're going to use as our which we are using as our customs buildings. Place next to the buildings as you see there. So that's the exit checkpoint done for goods coming in. And this is the entrance checkpoint for goods coming out. Come on. Just uh any jam up with it, there you go. And now and don't forget to drag one way road through to activate the path so make sure everything is pointing the right way. And there you go. I'm just delete any test on your build. So now it's time to finish off the fences around the port. There's a little useful trick here you can use and I have to give credit to the, my fellow YouTuber Sam Google Plexing for this. Um, lots will always orient to the higher class road. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you if you build an avenue, the avenue is higher class than the one road, which is considered that by the game, and so the lots will automatically orient to the avenue. So that just helps you to place them correctly without having to keep rotating. And then you can just um, delete the avenue and build up a little bit of cutting. So that's the end of the port. You can see it looks pretty good. It's just the fundamentals. Of course, there's more details you can add. But there you go, that's the basic fundamentals of building port. That's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I've been SmileyMK, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.